And I, I literally just ordered French fries to go. On the website, you have to fill out all the information. So I just call and then I'll just pay when I check, you know, and I pick up. Mm -hmm. And I get there and I did not have my wallet. It was like $3.50 or $4, whatever it was. And I was like, he's like, do you have your credit card number? I could just charge it. I was like, honestly, I don't know any of my credit card numbers. The chef and the guy, kid in the front was like, ah, whatever. It's, it's cheap. Just whatever. Pay us next time. Did wow. you go back and pay? Ironically, we ended up having pizza from there four hours later. And I called back in. I was like, hey, this is the guy that didn't pay for the fries. Can I get out of pizza now? <laughs> she went all the way for pig, fries? You? You're just getting pizza and fries and not paying and you're ridiculous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I'm getting those diabetes drugs. Who cares? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Yeah, what's your Ozempic? It doesn't matter. Oh, you're yeah, just looking at those 40 guy. pounds, bro. <laughs> Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, Groove Chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Group Chat. We got a hot episode today. Um, I learned a lot about the NFL today. Uh, I mm -hmm. tuned in to all the big championship games. I was really excited. Not a big football guy, but did a lot of research leading into the game. Was ready big to researcher. watch it. Big researcher. Watch a lot of Stephen A. Smith. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have a take. I have a very take, a big take that I'm just very sure first of. First take. Uh, yeah. The, uh, let's, well, some would call it the first take um, of the NFL as a whole. So I, I got to ask you guys a question because I know you guys watch a lot of football. Um, that being said, we got a lot of news to talk about as well. Uh, we're talking about the end of of fairy tale land as we know it. What I mean by fairy tale land is Postmates, Uber, streaming, free delivery. It's all it's coming all to an over. end. It's all over. It's all crumbling one by one. We have the next thing to fall um, in that regard. Uh, we're talking about the divide in America between the have and the have nots and the sort of people walled People that gardens. have delivery and people who have to do takeout. It's a big Which difference. side are you on? Which side are you on? It's a big difference. We're going to talk about income. We're going to talk about how much that matters in uh, dating life for young people. Uh, and we're even going to talk about, I hate to say it, but a, a, a terrible you know, incident that happened out here in one of the nicest uh, areas of LA, arguably the nicest, um, speaking of you know different areas and stuff like that. So we got a lot to talk about. Uh, we got a really fun NFL discussion here right at the beginning. Um, you guys ready? Let's we go. are ready and we have the discord for all the chatty Kathy club members now live head over to our nice. Instagram. The video is there to uh, let you in. So you know how to enter it, check it out. And uh, we'll kick off all the cool little features this week. Big on and meet up. Yep. Hopefully not in Beverly Hills. Safe area. Safe. Yeah. Nice and safe. We'll find a safe area for the meetup. Yeah. Good luck. You're going to show up. I will. If someone's safe. You should meet up at Disneyland. Safe there. If you're rich. VIP experience. Okay. Sounds good. You guys ready to get into it? Yep. Let's do it. Hey, guys. What's going on? Just some football. Big NFL. Hey, I got day. a question. I got a question about football. I love football. So I've said it a million times. The game just ended. Uh, Kansas City and the Bengals. Mm -hmm. I've said it a million times on the show. I'm not the sports guy. I, I hardly ever watch football um, other than Super Bowls. But I just watched that whole game. And here's my question. Everyone's just okay that the NFL is rigged? Which part is rigged? <laughs> it's a great question. I, I want to hear where you're going with this. Where I mean, do you think it's rigged? I didn't see anything I mean, rigged the whole weekend. I the thought it was Kansas a great weekend City of football. Chiefs were so given so many opportunities, including what? like weird double third downs. Yep. And weird call over and over and over. And like, oh, we whistled. No one heard the whistle after Mahomes just. I saw the video. Ruined. I saw the whistle. No, you're gonna, I'm with and then, drama. And then right with at drama the end, this. right at the end, you perfectly what this guy gives fucking Princess Patty Mahomes a little shove, 
And oh, oops, that he was, got moved right into field goal territory. That's called a personal foul. Oh, and well, guess I'm what? With trauma. God. I'm so I just want to know, as fans of the NFL, you guys are just okay with it. You guys I'm are just completely used to okay this. with it. Patty Mahomes is the greatest NFL player oh, of the last geez. decade. There's Tom Brady. Joe Burrow outplayed Tom the Brady is the best player of, of the last 20 years. The last 10 years is Patrick Mahomes. And you know what? You don't no put way. your goddamn hands on Patrick Mahomes. I don't Patrick give a fuck. Mahomes. You never Patrick touch Mahomes. him and you don't touch his brother. If he Patrick wants Mahomes, to dance all over your grave on the Super Bowl. <laughs> his brother is fair game. But his, the, his, Patrick Mahomes had a good first brother. seven minutes. And then Joe Burrow outplayed the shit out of him. And they... What do you look, mean? I get it. He's a I, bum. I, look, I, I'm with drama. This was uh, rigged. This is rigged. This, this is, is rigged. rigged. I've I've heard like, oh, sports are rigged, but like I don't watch them enough to know. I turn on this game. That was as <laughs> rigged as I has ever have ever seen a thing. And well, I just want to know you if that's just anything. part of the game. You guys just are okay with that. I'm totally okay with it. Okay. When my guys win, Got my it. guy is Patty. Your I love guy. Patty. Uh, my guy's Joe Burrow. We lost drama. I was I was rolling with O H I O. We didn't have a uh, chance. Yeah. No. It was stolen from us. It was stolen. Who they think they're not going to make the Super Bowl? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Stop the steal. I Stop mean, the steal. Stop the fucking steal, man. That was crazy. That was the most blatant. I'm so glad. And then you know what I did is I went on Twitter because I understand this is like now I love it, except for too bad now the season's over. I went on there. I'm like, oh, I want to see what people are saying on Twitter. First hashtag I saw, NFL rigged. Yeah. Agreed. I didn't, I, I didn't get the served The people that. have spoken. The people have spoken. Well, it's great. I mean, like the proper teams made the Super Bowl. The two best teams. Ugh. The two best teams all season were the Eagles and the Chiefs. The two best players in the NFL are Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. They are the best teams. They get to go to the Super Bowl. The other teams suck. Brock no. Purdy, this like this fantasy is like, land. This is, one of the, this is one of the rare times D actually picked two winners. What did I say? He's in the normally morning? a loser. No. He's no. typically a loser. I didn't, I didn't pick your gambling no, no. Yep. Let's look at your gambling yeah. history. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, can just stop gambling. Exactly. If you, if you <laughs> gamble. On a, nose, on a nose, I've not picked a game all season. I did not pick a winner. I did not say who was winning. I just watched. I kept my mouth fucking shut. Did you or did you this, not attend a Super Bowl with one team's jersey on other, that's under like 10 the years other teams? years ago. That's what ten I thought. 10 years ago. That's a different generation. D, different this generation. Is the luckiest that D's this ever morning, been. This morning, I said. Oh, my God. This this morning, I said uh, the, only, the two people going to the Super Bowl are Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts, and that's what happened. Predicted the win. A it was broken a clock time. is right twice a day. Yeah, once every 20 years. When was the last yes. time you were right on both teams? <laughs> Be I, honest. It was easy. This was easy. You guys don't know oh anything about God. sports. That's why. <laughs> this I'm is not, just... I'm like, I'm like Warren Buffett, the Oracle. I get it now. Now I see, like, okay, NFL, it's fun. It's like WWE. Like, you know the storyline. This is WWE wrestling. Logan Paul should join. He'll fucking be the best quarterback next year. Go rig it. I agree. This is fucking, you're watching a soap opera. I'm with you, drama. Thank you, Well, Anna. guess what? I enjoy a good soap opera. Well, you just watched one, and you're about to watch a really big one in two weeks. Yeah, I mean, no one wants to see Cincinnati or the Niners, boring-ass cities. Niners are losers, and Bengals Kansas are losers. Kansas City? Come on. What's Patrick going on in Kansas Mahomes. City? He's the highest played player in sports. <laughs> Get him out of there. Joe Burrow's better. Joe, Joe Burrow's the next Tom Brady. Patrick yeah, Mahomes. Joe Burrow's the Is guy. He just keeps losing. What Tom Brady won. He would what win last Super year? Bowls. Joe Burrow's lost last year to the Rams. I know, but Joe Burrow shit team. on Patty Mahomes. My team. Shit My team. Him. My team. Well, his little brother did fucking make the stallion dances in the audience. <laughs> Guess what? I'm a He's savage. Be dancing for the next two weeks. So who are you going with? Pick yeah. your pick. You're the, you're the oracle. I haven't yeah, decided. Yeah, yeah, I need yeah. it now. No. What do you think Goodell? What did Goodell now, choose? Goodell, what does I need Goodell to see want? injuries. I'm a big injury guy. Oh, God. I need to know everyone. <laughs> but injuries. I, I need to make sure everyone's healthy. Yeah, Mahomes is injured. <laughs> Patrick, you, you know what the thing about Patrick Mahomes, if you do enjoy sports? Patrick Mahomes is like the Cleveland Cavs when LeBron took him to the finals and won. He's playing with nobody but Travis Kelsey. He has one awesome player and the rest of the team – would not be stars on any other team. But in that game, other than the first first quarter, Patrick Mahomes played like shit. Because he's playing with nobody. Yeah. He's literally on a nose. He's it's, playing with he, jokers. The, the, 
Who is he playing with? No, he's playing with that Joker's. ref. That main yeah, ref that kept with coming out and announcing he's phantom whistles. He deserves the ref. The ref. You can tell. He's he playing with the ref. You can tell. He deserves the refs. It's he deserves rigged. the refs. It's the WWE. The thirteenth man. man should be the refs. It's, I it's can't amazing it. that you actually uh, were able to. I know you don't watch a lot of football, but you caught yeah. on to that. Oh, from a mile away. For me, I think maybe because I don't <laughs> no, watch a lot of football and I didn't have any like Ohio emotional, it, like uh, I wasn't wrapped up in the story. I was like, oh, this is fake. Like when they kept <laughs> showing the crazy calls and they kept showing the Bengals coach just being like, what the fuck? Like what? Again, yeah. He's just a again, shitty coach again, and his and team is not happened. disciplined. Ugh. Same thing with the like, Niners. They're undisciplined. Like every game, someone like that pass interference call where the guy like what he had his arm around him, didn't even alter his movement. Ridiculous. Yeah. And there was like penalties called where no one would have affected the outcome of the play. Yeah. And all of a sudden they get a first down. Don't be a bum. Yeah. That's Ugh. the rule in life. Oh Don't be a God. bum. Like Mahomes is sacked it. and all of a sudden he has a first down and it's first. Don't yeah. sack him. <laughs> they just got a random second try at a third down. That was fair. Why do you let them do the play? Oh, it was so loud in here. No one heard the whistle. No one put their fucking arms up. This is the, crazy. the announcers were even like, this is a little sketch. Oh, the announcers but I get were, it. Go ahead. Go ahead. What are you going to say? No, I said the announcers, uh, Nance and Roma, were saying like, this is pretty yeah. sketch. <laughs> yeah. I get it though. If you approach it like the WWE and you know that the storyline has already been figured out. Okay. I can play make-believe. I like it. I mean, it's yeah. better for the sport that Patrick Mahomes is in that Super Bowl. It is. It just is. It's not. Bill Burroughs is way so better. much cooler. Yeah. Is he? Yeah, he Why? Because yeah. his hair curls a little? He's a he's dork. He's just cooler. He's dork. just cool. He's, he's a good Bum. representative of. He just loses. Every time I, I watch a game with him, he's losing. He's, he's he lost the Super Bowl. Patrick lost. Mahomes last year. Lost. You know what everyone was saying it, uh, leading up to this game? Because I watched a little bit of the uh, clips so that I could get excited for it. Is you know I think Joe Burrow's just in a different league than Patrick Mahomes. I think we just have to. Yeah, accept he should that. play another sport. That's exactly right. Joe Burrow <laughs> should play golf because he's not an NFL quarterback. NFL oh, quarterbacks win God. Super Bowls. You are this is right. Super Jesus Bowls. Christ. You gotta win Super Bowl. This is where. Uh, this is sorry, ridiculous. guys. People probably boys tune off on the pod. Yeah. So I get if we it. Have, now like, I get why all sports analysts just scream at each other. You have to because yeah. it always just comes down to this. Yeah, some people are bums. <laughs> okay. All right. You want to talk about the news? <laughs> oh, my God. Um, the, okay. the next news topic's not that spicy. Yeah. We're talking about fucking grocery deliveries. <laughs> a lot yeah. of, a lot of yeah, this is rigged. News. They're rigging these prices like the NFL. <laughs> Amazon has free grocery delivery online. It was a huge thing. Everyone was talking about it. Now they're raising the minimum price to get that free delivery. Um, look, it seems like... Um, Everyone raced to make everything as free as possible. Didn't matter how much cash you burned. We just got to grow, grow, grow. And now that, uh, now that, you know, things are tightening up a little bit, we have to tighten these things up, right? Is that what's happening? Grocery delivery on Amazon uh, Fresh used to be $35 for free delivery, which, okay, that's fine. You should be able to order like uh, a gallon of milk and get free delivery. I'm okay with that. 35 seems fine. They've now raised it to one hundred and fifty dollars starting February twenty eighth. One hundred and fifty eight. That's just not free delivery. Yeah, and and by the way, that maybe for a family of four, you can hit one hundred and fifty dollars. If you're a couple or if you're a single person, there's no way you can spend that much on groceries. You just can't. That's yeah. a it's fucking bullshit. And it's nine ninety five for orders under fifty dollars, six ninety five delivery for fifty to hundred. You have to be a billionaire to order groceries delivered. I think they're just telling you to get to the store. Yeah. What's that, like three dozen eggs? Uh, does yeah. that even, I, I don't you think that this is just like we're kind of hitting a little bit of reality though? Yeah, I think that's just, this is all it is is, you should, hey, we, if you want to use these services, here's actually the market price. Yeah, like just drive to the grocery store. Yeah, if yeah. you don't want it, pay your, you know. Basically, go, we're going to unwind. We I are. think we're going to unwind all delivery, on-demand ride-sharing, all of that shit's over. Like, it's basically like we didn't need to create Uber. We didn't need to what create even, Instacart. We shouldn't have created any of these businesses. Streaming, well, we like Anand said at the beginning of the year. Streaming yeah, exactly. as a whole. Everyone should just go back to cable. We should basically yeah. discredit all those businesses until- Go back to 2010. Un autonomous cars come. 
There's no, none of this shit works. It just doesn't work. It works when interest rates are zero and there's unlimited capital to keep I know, but it. like even Uber and Lyft are still, they but don't make money. three years ago. They didn't, no, they didn't. It didn't no, make meaning money. People were willing to keep funding it. Yeah, but now we know they're bullshit businesses. Yeah. That, that's fine. But when interest rates go back to, you know, negligent to zero, these businesses will all be funded. Which has to happen GPT, again, right? Scale AI. What, I mean, they just got $10 billion. Yeah, yeah. but that's Microsoft. They're, that's different. But my point is, there's always going to be capital that's willing to invest in these types of businesses. It's just we're in a shitty environment right now, so they don't pile in. And they're bad businesses. Inherently, how do you they're not make good this businesses. Business? Like, how do you like, make what's this chat GPT, what's, makes sense? Chat GPT is charge? an actually true software business. Very different. But there's no money being made, right? They're charging $42 a month now. $42 no a month. That. No one's paying that. Who's what are paying you that? joking? Did you Everyone's pay free. I, of course I'm signing up for it. I use it every day. Yeah, but you, you hear all the buzz about how like Netflix is going to stop password sharing. You think anyone's, they're not paying for Netflix. You think they're paying for chat GPT? <laughs> yeah, no one's no paying for chat Enterprise GPT. chat GPT will work and Microsoft gave them $10 billion. So they'll figure it out. Like it doesn't matter now. It's just, it, the problem with physical well, labor. They're going to figure it out. It's the same way no, you say Uber no, but, and Lyft but, are going to no, figure no, it but out. You have to understand there's a physical labor piece to delivery that can't be figured out yet. Through software, Google, Microsoft, uh, you know, all Apple, all these companies have proven, and Facebook, that software is actually very scalable, and it does make a shitload of money. You add a human being to your organization, it doesn't work, because that's the problem. So, with Uber. are you saying Uber is not going to exist? I, I mean, I think it's it's just going to be more and more expensive, and a smaller pop population will use it. That's it. Yeah, it's a it'll, small it'll business. Exist. It'll be. It should be down 75, 80 percent from here, and it should just exist in that. Pr like, I don't think Uber's going down 75% from here. That's crazy. Why? It doesn't make any money. You have to make money. The world has told you you have to make money. The world has told you the last 12 months you have to make money, but the previous 14 years you never had to. Well, when my boy Jay like Powell ha hammers on Wednesday new interest rates, no he's going to tell you again. No way. They're going to get the party rolling here before too long. Yeah, exactly. Everything's nah. going to be Quantitative fun. easing. Let her rip. He's going to fucking hammer. I mean, Uber's hammer a you $60 billion like the Chiefs dollar company. hammered the Bengals. Uber's a $60 Ugh. billion dollar company. It doesn't not make money. It doesn't matter. A lot of companies don't make money. Every software company that you're talking about Microsoft doesn't make money. Microsoft shits cash. Snowflake doesn't make money. Uh... ServiceNow doesn't make money. None of these companies make money. They're they, all software businesses. And, yeah, making money is But Google old. and Microsoft and Facebook There's four do. companies that make money. So yeah, those, those companies were going to get slaughtered. They already have. And I think everyone's like, this is the price where we're willing to buy. Because yeah. they're not going down any further. Uh, I think they'll continue to get slaughtered. Okay. I have no well, faith in so any of So you're basically fun. short all growth tech. Because all growth, growth tech, tech they can't make money. All growth tech loses money. But it's all before, really. It really Every, is all yeah, before. It's exactly, so it's everyone all before. else is short. Yes, 100%. Because I, the world has proven the last two years showed that the companies no, that got rewarded- already down 70, 80% from their highs. And they're still way overvalued. No one would think any Uber is properly valued still. They don't believe that. I think this is that. just a moment. I think it's like a fake reality check that gets- Yeah, it's fake. The party gets turned right back That's on fine. in no time. I pick Super Bowl winners. Of course I could pick stocks. Oh, God. It's easy. Oh, God. He had two <laughs> the sloppy picks. You guys Moving need a sloppy on. picks. I mean, wasn't I the guy that said the stock market was going to rally two weeks ago and I was told I was an idiot in this podcast? Wait till, wait, let's wait three weeks. <laughs> you did say that. Wait till Friday. <laughs> and Bitcoin's up 40% since our prediction episode. We're only four weeks into the year. I'm hot. Okay, let's talk about more Joes. Not yeah. just the true winner, Joe Burrow. This Trader is a real Joe's. company. A real company that makes real money. Trader Joe's, you know, we love, our favorite thing on here is lists, you know, top cities to move if you're this, if you're that. Trader Joe's asked their customers to rank their top nine products. What are they? I am blown away by the top one. 18,000 customers responded to their 14th annual survey. Uh, it's really interesting because this is probably one, arguably one of the more popular grocers in America. Number one, most popular item, chili and lime flavored rolled tortilla chips. Number one. I feel like I'm going to, I'm just going to be so wrong here. Like I'm going to hate on all these and then like our audience is probably going to be like, dude, everyone loves the chili and lime tortillas. Um, what else? Runners up boring. were the hash browns, which I get. Phenomenal. Okay. 
everything but the bagel sesame seasoning blend. I get that. I know that's hot. That should be number Phen- one. Yeah, I've seen phenomenal. That. I've seen that hype. Chocolate croissants, which I've never had, but I'm sure they're good. Um, then a, n- a bunch of number uh, of other chips. World's uh, puffiest white cheddar corn pops, crunchy curls, all that. Top beverage, sparkling honey crisp apple juice. Okay. Hmm. That's fine. Top sparkling cheese. Sparkling apple juice. I get it. That's popular. Uh, um, it was uh, unexpected cheddar. wonder what's so oh. unexpected about it. The st- uh, cheddar cheese with caramelized onions are the top. Top Gross. entree, mandarin mm. orange chicken. Okay. Mm. That's fair. Top household item, uh, seasonal candies, one on this item. Uh, seasonal candle, sorry. Seasonal scents, peony blossom, cedar blossom, balsam. Top produce was uh, bananas. Top dessert, hold the cone, mini ice cream cones. Phenomenal. I've had that. <laughs> this is Patrick the most Mahomes boring crowd. <laughs> Who is this top, fucking Trader top, Joe's crowd? This is boring. Top, top vegan, vegetarian. Um, vegan kale, cashew, and basil pesto. And then vegetable fried rice, beefless bulgogi, pollock paneer, cauliflower, and gnocchi followed. Okay. Have you had any of that? You guys are the veg- vegetarians. Um, I have had the Pollock paneer and uh, the gnocchi. I've not had the the pesto. They have a good Indian selection in oh, the frozen yeah. section. Very good. Those like really frozen foods. Yeah, the frozen foods like Pollock paneer and rice. You have a vegan tikka masala. They do like a, a or- chana masala. They do an orange chicken, but with cauliflower. Phenomenal. I'm a big fan of Trader Joe's. Great place. Okay. And they're just so nice. Like the experience is good. Like I'm sure they pay their employees really well. And- they they do pay their employees well. And I lived next to a Trader Joe's for a decade and mm-hmm. it's the same employees. Yeah. They, there's The turnover wasn't there. And and they're so nice. Like I'll, I'll come in with like holding kids and they're just like, you guys want stickers? Do you want this? Do you want that? Like they're so nice. I'll tell you what, they have some uh, like Reese's peanut butter cup type things that are oh, yeah. phenomenal. Better and than the, Reese's. The chocolate covered almonds at the cash register. I always yeah. get sucked into Their registers that. are so good with <laughs> yeah. the chocolate shit. Okay. Yeah, they well, get shout, you. Out to, shout out to all the Joes today. You know, the real winners. The anyway, real winners. moving on. Um, here, here's a story is um, we talk a lot on here about like side hustles and people that, you know, maybe don't want to have full-time jobs. And so, uh, you know, we talked a lot recently about like, um, People want to be in control of their own time and maybe that's why um, people are quitting regular jobs and trying to figure out their hustles and all that stuff. I think a lot of our listeners have probably um, had side hustles or currently do. Um, Good news. We have a list of the top five companies where people have um, went on to start their own thing after working at that company. Now, Mm -hmm. the good news is a lot of opportunity. I mean, we're talking numbers here, like 8%, 7% of former employees have went on to start their own things. Bad news is these companies are all pretty difficult to get, to get a, job. a job in. <laughs> <laughs> like so impossible. step one might be harder than <laughs> just starting a startup <laughs> from your mom's house. Um, so what, what, who do we got? The top five are Bain, Oliver Wyman, which I actually don't even know what the fuck uh, that is. What is Oliver Wyman? I've, I've never heard of it. Law firm, consultant. I don't know. What is it? No idea. McKenzie. Impossible. Strategy. I have no idea what that is. Strategy and uh, no idea. And Universal uh, Music They're Group. all strategy advisors. Oliver Wyman's a strategy advisor. These are all okay. consultants and strategy advisors. And then okay, Universal Music Group. Okay, but I've never heard of Oliver The good Wyman. news is it's not hard to get a job at Universal Music Group. I feel like <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah, that's true. That's you got like one I, option. I know a lot I don't of idiots that work at Wyman. Universal <laughs> Music Group. <laughs> I feel like I have a pretty good uh, like network of smart folks and I've never heard the company that anyone's talked about, Oliver Wyman. Or strategy and strategy Maybe it's and like percent. so impossible to get a strategy job there. Maybe they have, and percent. Yeah, maybe they have 10 employees and fucking... I think Oliver Wyman just sounds a little made up. 
<laughs> I'm, just saying, I'm just saying this list, other than Universal Music Group, which is definitely attainable, yeah. you're, these, it's impossible to get a job at any of these places. I Two mean, of them, you don't even know if they exist. <laughs> yeah, they're fake. <laughs> Bain and McKenzie, I mean, I, every smart person I know worked at Bain and McKenzie. Like, you had a stint there. It's yeah. just... Yeah, Bain and McKenzie are hot. Yeah, like, <laughs> that, yeah, it's yeah, Harvard. Yeah. It's it's the the Harvard of jobs. Mm -hmm. Like you worked at Bain and McKenzie. But is it not like you have to make it into Harvard Harvard and then you gotta make it into like Yeah, that's right. You have to get Harvard then. Yeah. So it's double. Very few people make it outside of like Stanford, Harvard, Penn to Bain and McKenzie. Like it's not like a you're not, you know, the the guy from Oliver a, Wyman, a I'm on the list you is not making like, it hey, to I McKenzie. Heard, I heard this on group chat last night. I just wanted to walk in and see if you guys are hiring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, if anyone's graduating, you know what? Give it a shot. See if you Give can even shot. get it. I remember <laughs> when our friends, like one of a, one who's listening, Ali, who uh, went to USC with me, um, interviewed at Bain. And like just the interview was so fucking hard. So, so the questions, <laughs> these, these are the questions they ask at Bain and McKenzie. Uh, how many ping pong balls fit in a 747 Boeing? Oh, no. Not and they, they don't care about the actual number. They want to see how you think about it. And yeah, they yeah. want to see how you get to it. Um, just say, well, what country are you in? Because ping pong is illegal. And mm. Yeah, what if you're wrong? <laughs> yeah. You just like, yeah. you probably throw it back at them, right? Yeah. At this point. These yeah, nuts. <laughs> that's why we didn't we didn't get in yeah. we're not getting hired yeah. Yeah. i was i did investment banking interviews which are really tough well, give me some questions from investment no, but it was super analytical nothing about the no ping pong balls yeah. none of that bullshit it was mm. like how do you know a balance sheet mm, okay. a pnl not how, not, how, not how many balls like, do you have if you have <laughs> yeah. how six many balls kids? fit into <laughs> yeah. how many like, balls investment banking is like you could actually study for <laughs> too many <laughs> You could actually study for the interviews I did. Um, you have to be smart, like a genius <laughs> to work at these other companies. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, hey, um, there you have it. I would also say for our listener, this list is like, um, you know, look, of course, if you're like a consultant, like your um, the percentage of your employees that went on to start their own things, it's kind of like a natural progression out of that job, right? Because you've looked at so many companies, you've helped strategize. And of course, the next thing you're going to want to do is go start your own. I would say it seems like in today's day and age, this list is probably not accurate, meaning there's so many people that are working these like remote jobs where they're working like an hour a day. Yeah. And the rest of the time they're working on their thing. And not that I'm saying people should do that, but I think if you wanted to really start a uh, startup, it sounds like now it's easier than ever because you don't have someone looking over your shoulder managing yeah. your time. So the, the things have changed is, is what I guess I'm saying. I, I think the problem with the um, perception of entrepreneurship is that everyone who goes off to start their business has to become Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Which is just unattainable. There are plenty of people that have started their business uh made have done extremely well and lived extremely well yeah because like now that you know we have a lot of experience like i would argue like this the steps you have to take to make to be jeff bezos is not meant for everyone and the steps you have to do to be the the local dry cleaner in your town that has a great life is kind of e equally as good yeah. And and I think the problem is is that the 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 small business or like the small business owner that lives a great life rarely gets highlighted, but the person that gets highlighted is Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk and that's like that's unattainable for most of from a pure intelligence yeah. level, it's on a table for 99.9% .9 of society, right? Like yeah. Yeah. to navigate the waters of what Elon and Jeff Bezos have done, it's impossible. Yeah. But yeah, you can still do really, really well with your yeah. own business and like have an insane life. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally true. I mean, we've met so many of them. Like we've met. Yeah. And that's just our little world. It's not like we've met every, you know, business owner. Like, but there's so many people that just have good lives. They work relatively hard. They run their thing and they're happy.
And you can definitely yeah. do that no matter where you live, especially in today's day and age. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's that's like the magic of it. Like I meet like random people that have incredible businesses all over the country. I would argue that have better lives than Elon Musk. Well, for sure. Elon Musk's life oh, yeah. sucks. Yeah, sucks. I mean, you know what stress Suck. that guy has? Jeff Bezos' life just got good in the last five years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he had to literally throw away his lo- previous life. Yeah, yeah literally. Like a, just yeah. fucking he go got rid of trash his and job. move on. He got rid of his family. <laughs> yeah. And that was like, okay. He put on a floor now shirt he, now he and said, let's party. Yeah. <laughs> That's the key, <laughs> the key to happiness. <laughs> oh uh, but God. I also think um, there's so many businesses that you can make money in that aren't sexy. And yeah, if you're willing to like actually go out and talk to people, you'll hear fascinating stories, which I heard one this weekend. I told D, I don't, I don't need to share it, but I was just like, holy shit, this is mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. And it's industries that aren't sexy, that aren't on newspapers, that aren't in the magazines. They aren't getting profiled. No one's like doing a thread on Twitter about their business. Yeah. Like their business. Still- I think one of the big things is like <laughs> their business owner isn't an influencer. You know, that's a big yeah. thing. Yeah. Like there's an influencer that's like, I, I run my business. And that's the only view that people have of it. And there's yep. so many yeah. people that like are barely even on social media that run great businesses. And, and I think fun. that like old school uh, business person laughs at the way sort of all young people think about what success is. Yeah. Because yeah. they're making money just, you know. Hand over fist. Hand yeah. over fist, but they're making it, you know, just picks and shovels. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I would say that, um, I don't want to sound like a jerk here, but there's a lot of dummies uh, making a lot of money running their own businesses. And the reason I say that is because, like, there's a lot of room for, like, disruption. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a lot of room for people to just come in, you know, use modern day tools. Um, and do moderately better things. And yeah, work fortune. pretty hard. You know, not like you're not dying every day and going to, you know, not getting home till 10 p.m. Just step it up a little bit. And there's some people that are doing well that aren't really working that hard or, or necessarily that smart that that could be disrupted. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'll give you an example, like specifically amongst Indian restaurants. Indian restaurants growing up were basically very much the very same experience, not like well-designed, not a great experience. And you know, just generally, like you could tell, they, did, they cut corners thinking they could make money. And... Recently, you've seen people, like probably next generation of Indian entrepreneurs, make restaurants that are better, nicer, cleaner, yeah, healthier yeah. food. Like there's a restaurant called Tulsi that in Westwood and in Northridge that uh, my mom introduced us to. It's so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just better at everything. The experience yeah. is just a little better. Moderately better than everything. Yeah. And it could be a 500 store chain, in my opinion. Like, yeah. it has the potential to break through where it could be like a Panda Express. Yeah. Whereas, like, it's just, if you went down, I, I always look at it like, I'll go down the street and be like, could this coffee shop be a little bit better? Could this, uh, you know, restaurant a little bit better, the dry cleaner, you do the littlest, most basic things and you're a little yeah. bit better. Your, yeah. your, li- your life changes. Yeah. It's so true. There's so much opportunity. Okay. So there's our little inspiration corner here on group chat. Next up, Americans are just loving takeout. Oh yeah. So, um, you know, I'm sure that this exploded during COVID. Um, D, I know you, might do the most takeout of anyone on the on the group. I mean, I'm a big Postmates guy, but which counts, you know, but like you'll actually call ahead, go grab the food. Yeah. Um, the question here is, is that the new norm or, or is that is this just an after effect of COVID that that goes back to normal? I think um, I think if you look at Postmates, I think this is a reflection of the delivery business. Back to our original topic, which is grocery delivery. I can't get myself anymore to order delivery. It's too fucking expensive. Like I look at the final price and then I will literally go on the menu of the website of the company 
and it's four dollar difference per item times four it's effectively double it's not i don't think it's double it's probably like if you're if you're ordering like a ten dollar sandwich yeah, it's not far off if you're at a place like bucks. that yeah yeah with tax and tip and delivery, tax, tip, yeah, delivery yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they yeah. mark it up on the thing yeah, yeah, yeah and that's you're not problem. getting out of any postmates order under twenty dollars yeah, I think if you're ordering you like a sixty dollar meal, it's ob- it's obviously not double. But I think like a quick ten dollar sandwich, like which is probably mostly of I know it's mostly of what I get, mm-hmm. probably double. Yeah, and and I think I, I I understand why Americans are continuing to do takeout because I think delivery is basically unattainable for most of society. Yeah. I think you do it if you're drunk and you're high and you're just like, yeah, I need some <laughs> fucking. Taco yeah. Bell, whatever, but like I, I ju- it's just too expensive. And even like, and even takeout and delivery is just because of the last couple of years. I don't enjoy it. Like I do enjoy going to a restaurant, not because of the food, just because it's fun. Yeah. Like but the it's food's just also fun. significantly better. Like yeah, there's been a couple of places recently where I've went there. Name and after- name. Well, like I'll give you a really good example. Is like um, I was ordering sugar fish for a while like they do a really good job oh, yeah, the box. At their, yeah. yeah it's beautiful but man when you eat in that restaurant the food is literally three times as good yeah because you're eating two hours old fish that's what i'm saying but it's also like the, the fish whole thing is about vacation, sugar fish is the rice is warm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but like the rice is warm it's just so much better like i don't yeah. know there's a few places like that that i've went to and by the in, way in person it's just better that's an example of an a- item or a, a category that actually delivers okay. Yeah. Like you can't order French fries. Nope. No. Soggy. You can't order nachos. Disgusting. Disgusting. Like I ordered nachos and it was fucking like- Where'd you order from? Yeah. Like a, like a me- local Mexican place. It's just soggy as shit. Yeah. But I even ordered like last night I ordered hot wings and like by the time they, they get to you, they're the cold, cold and dry. And yeah. then you have to like warm them up in the microwave. Then Fair I order a, a side of sauce so that they're at least not dry and I can double salads the sauce travel on it. Well. Salads travel well. Salads travel They don't put the dressing. With dressing on the side, yeah. I did a salad uh, this afternoon from Crossroads. Traveled great. Sa- a nice salad with fresh. dressing on the side, you're fine. So, oh yeah. And, and the thing is, is like, I'm, I, I can't even remember the last time for me. I know like we'll order for other, the kids or whatever. Like sometimes delivery, but like I pick everything up now. I just do take not out. Take out is obviously like a, a a big thing, and you know I don't want to blow people's uh, spots up, but I know people who prefer takeout because they get out of the house, leave the kids at home, and they get yeah. to go takeout. Well, for you hate your kids. It's great. It's great. Yeah. great. Yeah. Throw on group chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to everyone right now listening to this while it's sneaking away from your family. They're going yeah. to Mendocino Farms picking up their yeah. family's food. I get it. I, I just, I'll tell yeah. you a good takeout story. So I order from a restaurant on Sunset, Pache Joint, all the time. And I walk in and I, I literally just ordered French fries to go. And I was with my kids and it was like a little chaotic. And I was like, hey, you guys have Apple Pay? Like, I don't need money. A wallet, nothing. And and I because I call it in. I don't even do that. You're app. like, I'm not at, at an hatred restaurant. Yeah. I actually have to pay. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. It's really <laughs> weird when you have to whip out your wallet. <laughs> yeah. And Showing up to random restaurants without money is really good. I and You're so ridiculous. I, and I and I because like on the website you have to fill out all the information. So I just call and then I'll just pay when I check, you know, and I pick up. Mm-hmm. And I get there and I did not have my wallet. It was like three fifty or four dollars, whatever it was. And I was like, he's like, Do you have your credit card number? I could just charge it. I was like, honestly, I don't know any of my credit card numbers. And the chef and the guy, kid in the front was like, ah, whatever. It's it's cheap. Just whatever. Pay us next time. Mm-hmm. He just let me go. Wow. Did you go back and pay? Ironically, we ended up having pizza from there four hours later. And I called back in. I was like, hey, this is the guy that didn't pay for the fries. Can I get out of pizza now? <laughs> she went all the way there for pig, fries? You? You're just getting pizza and fries and not paying and you're ridiculous. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, I'm getting those diabetes drugs. Yeah, yeah. 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 What's your Ozempic? It doesn't oh, matter. You're yeah, just looking at those 40 guy. pounds, bro. <laughs> so you did even, pay. Even, you made it right. 
I felt I felt really guilty, so I went like three hours later and yeah. and and went back and paid. But even you know Lisa downstairs at our coffee shop, I never I pay once a month, once every quarter. Oh, yeah. I'm on credit there. She yeah. racks up bills. She's gotten screwed yeah. over so many times Someti- though, and she continues to do it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll 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 come. You know, after like a month, I'll come back and she's like, "Yo, eighty five dollars." I was like, eighty five dollars." Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm we have employees have- <laughs> that have like got fired or or quit and had like a three hundred dollar bill. Yeah, Danny, yeah. I know you listen. Yeah, Danny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Danny, you That's owe so- us. We have to pay for your ass. <laughs> That's happened multiple times. No, oh, I like God. credit. It just feels like any town in USA. Yeah. Uh, when I walk downstairs, yeah, yeah, I, I just like wave and say, hey, this is what I'm taking. And I just walk away. It's it's nice. Like, I'm sure that happens more in smaller towns. Like the fact that like I can just oh, yeah. you not your pay for, yeah. you know, a pache joint and they see, they know who I am because I come there all the time. Yeah. You know, just like walk in, walk out. It's kind of dope. I like that. Yeah, I agree. Maybe you should move to a small town somewhere. Small get to town, know everyone. USA. Yeah, you go to, into the what restaurant. What are you talking about? I'm doing hey, it in Susie. West Hollywood. I, I, I barely pay That's for true. anything. Stay there. LA. Stay there. <laughs> I'm startled over. So you don't pay for shit in LA. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. I forgot that. That's not a rare occurrence. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, here's another one. Uh, we are coming upon Valentine's Day. Um, a couple weeks away, and it's a massive holiday for. Shopping. Is Valentine's Day another one of those days that was invented by? Yeah, it's a scam. It's a scam, right? Like, yeah. the, like, uh, like the NFL? Yep. <laughs> um, they, so, Americans apparently are planning to spend $26 billion this Valentine's Day. So, unfortunately, j Powell, you know what to do. Yeah. Um, that's just too much. But, uh, you know, it's a massive holiday. I'm sure, obviously, flowers, um, chocolates, um, all the above. What? Do you know anything about it? What do we got? You got some info? I mean, the number itself is just staggering. $26 billion. Uh, last year, they spent $24 billion, which is just bananas. Bananas. Um, and guess what? They're not buying bananas. The no. thing they're actually buying, 50 per, 57% of people are buying candy. Yeah. 40% are buying greeting cards. 37% mm-hmm. flowers. 32% evening out than jewelry gift cards and clothing uh the um ages 25 to 34 are going to spend an average of 238 dollars which is insane Jeez, which is absolutely 35 to 44 35 to 44 should spend zero i'm sorry 35 to 44 more than likely means you're married or you're with someone very sig- you're like you're the very close like a serious girlfriend yeah or boyfriend they're going to spend $336. The problem is, is they wild. got it to the point where like you can't, if you're dating someone or in a relationship or obviously married, whatever, like you can't not get something for Valentine's But if you're in a, if a relationship after like five, six years, like a girlfriend, does Valentine's Day even matter? You got to like, do something. You're, what you are you doing for Valentine's Day drama? You're, you're like, I know I'm doing nothing, so I'm spending zero. <laughs> I'll tell you exactly what I'm doing. I, I'll probably get flowers. Okay, that's what, chocolate. 150 bucks? Flowers and chocolate. I'm going to put in my 220 or whatever they said yeah, I was supposed that's to do. 220? 220. <laughs> that's what you said, 150 bucks probably for flowers. I'll get some chocolates. There you go. There's my 220. I did my part. Why chocolates? Who's well, no Kareen, way she's, Kareen's eating chocolates. <laughs> well, Kareen has a one specific favorite type of chocolate. And like a Godiva or something, you know, like Whatever, a specific yeah. box of chocolate that I get probably once every Valentine's Day because she doesn't like love it. It's not like she sits there and just yeah, she, that's my point. She's not eating chocolates. <laughs> no, she's like, gonna uh, have one chocolate. Yeah, yeah. She's throwing the rest away. Yeah, yeah, it's like a Valentine's <laughs> tradition. There's my two twenty. Let's keep moving. But you don't do anything. Like you don't bring home like a couple flowers. I definitely haven't done anything in the last five years. <laughs> Do you even mention it? Like, do you say happy Valentine's Day? Like, I'm not yeah. even in town this year. What, yeah. Ironically enough, my oldest son, Dominic, was like, what are you doing for Valentine's Day? How wow. does he even know what it is? Because at school, they talk about it. Oh. Wow. And I'm He's like, not a goddamn on. thing, kid. And what he said? You got to show him. You got to show him how to properly... Look, he's going to have a crush soon. He's going to be like, sorry, I was out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Some little 10-year-old is going to be like, what? <laughs> um, okay, well, look, 
it works. Twenty six I mean, billion is wild. I mean, it fucking works. Made up holiday. Made up holiday is it's all like kind of bullshit. Like meaning, um, like Christmas, obviously, like people shop, but I don't know. Correct me if you think I'm wrong here, but people are buying each other like gifts, like things that they want. It kind of the spectrum is very broad. You can get anything. You can buy someone an iPhone. You can buy someone new socks. But for Valentine's, it's almost all like. I, I bought a Christmas gift this year. And a pretty serious relationship, amount, the amount of stress people probably have on Finding Valentine's. something. But what I'm saying is it's almost all like pointless. Like it's just like chocolate, greeting cards, flowers, and jewelry. Like none of it's like- Junk. Yeah, like it's all just flowers junk. Flowers are dead. For the and dead. The, chocolate, and it the, makes you, the gives rest, you diabetes. The restaurant yeah. hustle, the restaurant hustle, the prefix menu. No. So you spend, if you try to take someone out, yeah. You're out, you know. Three, I highly four recommend anyone going out on Valentine's Day, do not do the prefix menu. Go the night before, the day after. It's a scam. Go the week before. Go Correct. next year. I don't care. Do not <laughs> Why do are the these numbers menu. up? These numbers should be down. It's inflation. We should be at 22 billion. This is why J Pal is going to fuck Valentine's up. Valentine's is like New Year's Eve. It's just unnecessary pressure. I hate it. <laughs> it might be Fucking the most unnecessary it. pressure. Okay, uh, next up, people who are dating uh, say that earning less than $30,000 a year is a deal breaker, um, <laughs> which, you know, I'm guessing this is mostly, I don't want to, you know, stereotype or do anything like that, but are we talking mostly about women talking about men? Are we talking about both? I, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's unclear. I think that the bigger conversation, which I found more interesting about this was, one third of couples don't talk about finances until after marriage. That's so and weird. that's a weird less than thirty thousand dollars a year um, is a deal breaker. Con- yeah, like I mean, I, I, to me that seems like nothing because I literally feel like if you went around and asked <laughs> a bunch of young women in LA, that number is like three hundred thousand. Yeah. Like I listen to the way that some young yeah. pretty girls talk yeah. and it is fucking it I is I don't even in, think it's 300,000. I think you're high, it's higher. It's I think million. it is. I try to be nice. I try to be nice. I I hear I overhear some conversations sometimes and uh it's fucking crazy like what the expectations are. 30,000? I mean maybe in like Middle America, that's the thing. I don't know. It seems kind of reasonable. I'm just so used to LA being like so much crazier. Um, I'm trying to think. Thirty thousand is what on a minimum wage basis, like thirteen dollars an hour, probably. Yep. Like someone that I, uh, I mean, I don't Target's say. ripping fifteen. <laughs> like you could go down the street and get twenty an hour anywhere here. I know, but let's just say you don't live in LA to make. But Walmart you, just raised if, theirs to 14, I think. If, yeah, if you do 14 at Walmart and do um, overtime, you're making more than 30. If you're willing to work eight hours a day, I think it's pretty hard to make less than 30. I mean, that yeah, seems you know reasonable. What? You don't deserve to have sex if you don't do that. <laughs> that seems reasonable. It's, if you can't keep a job at Walmart and drive Uber three times a week, I mean, come on. Do you really need to yeah. be worried about a girlfriend? <laughs> Because then you're going to come up on Valentine's Day and you owe no 220. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you going to do on Valentine's dude. when you got to pay your 220, man? Yeah. What's, what are you going to spend $6 on Valentine's Day? If you're willing to work, it's pretty tough to make less than 30000 I would love to go interview or poll uh, a $28,000 year. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Pretty girls in LA and ask, find out what this number is. It's a what's million. What's the deal breaker number? I. It's not. It's it actually a not a number. It, it's no, not no, a number. It's, it's a, a lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. That's the right. That's the right uh, way. And to I'll, put I'll it. tell you from firsthand, like f- having that financial conversation is a very difficult one. My wife and I had, had a very particular lifestyle pre kids. It's impossible for us to have that lifestyle with kids. It's just yeah. not feasible anymore. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Like well. we had an inc- insane life pre kids. Kids are so expensive. You can't have it anymore. You get one or the other, kids or Postmates. No, you can have- <laughs> We have these kids, I'm going to pick it up myself. And I'm going to yeah, tell exactly. them I forgot and my wallet. Here, by the way, you can have it post kids. You just have to make so much money that allows you to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally true. That's and the number, a real relationship with some is honest in conversation. The, is in the seven figures. Here in LA, yeah. Yeah, 100%. Because six- 
I ain't getting you shit. You're picking up your food. Six with kids in Los Angeles is tough. So there's probably a lot of young women whose deal breaker <laughs> by your by that number is a million dollars. Yeah. Okay. Well, things are. But, you know. I, but I wonder, like, uh, just from a dating perspective, both male and female, do they care about the number as long as they're living a life that they love? Like, if you're traveling and you're going out to eat and no mm. one's like stressed out. No, I don't think so. No one cares about what the actual yeah, yeah, number is. That's fine. That's that's. I think it's more prevalent in L.A., San Francisco, New York, Miami, where the cost of living is so high. Like, so someone who's whoever the breadwinner is. I don't want to make like any you know mm -hmm. judgment. Whoever the breadwinner is in the relationship, as long as they're like, no one's stressed. The bill comes and everyone's having a good time. Yeah, you we're in Hawaii care. and the credit card didn't get declined. Mm -hmm. eh, pretty good. The problem is how easily those that lifestyle can go up yeah. you know what i mean you go to hawaii yeah, yeah. once and it's like I, we should do this twice a year we should go to cabo we why aren't we in mexico <laughs> why aren't we staying there why are we staying at the all-inclusive let's stay at the montage why yeah. aren't we staying where they did the revolve festival <laughs> <laughs> revolve around the world yeah, and then you're rice Revol estate. yeah <laughs> yeah if yeah, you yeah, follow we're... where rice <laughs> stays you'll be homeless yeah, yeah. if you have to stay if you have to keep up with her i gotta yeah, that <laughs> conversation to... is probably happening. <laughs> yeah, Dave, why don't we stay where Risa stays when she goes here? I bet you that happens. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hopefully my wife doesn't should, see where Risa stays. Unfollow Risa. Go on her account and block Risa. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Risa. We love, love you, Risa. but we can't keep up. You're too, you're too rich. <laughs> Did you see her? Like she did like a weird I like know, throwback. That's why in the it's so funny. Years. I was like. I had to stop clicking through. I was like yes. so jealous of what oh she's my God. done. I'm so jealous of her hotel stays too. It's so Holy good. Holy cow. Okay. All right. Here's the, I'm sorry that we have to go from laughs to a fucking depressing topic. Um, but we had, I'll just say what the headline is. I mean, we had a mass shooting here in California, very close in Beverly Hills, essentially uh, very close to us. Um, the reason why I hesitated there is because, you know, when you think of mass shooting, you usually think of like someone walking into like a, you know, like a festival or a mall or a school or something and, and shooting a bunch of people. This seems to have happened at a party, uh, at a house, maybe an Airbnb type situation. Um, right in the Beverly Hills area, like I said, three people were killed, four were injured. Um, I think the biggest thing, just living here for our listeners, just to give the perspective, is like, once again, I know you've heard us say this a few times over the last few years, but like um, you just never hear these type of stories living here. Um, shootings do not happen in this area, um, especially not on this level. Um, you know, essentially the headline could read mass shooting in Beverly Hills, um, which is just something that you don't ever hear. So not that these things aren't tragic everywhere. It's just um, I think everyone was a little shocked in L.A. that something like this happened in that area. Yeah, the what happened was apparently there was an Airbnb that was rented near Benedict Canyon. If you live in LA, it's north of Sunset in the hills of Beverly. Extremely uh, exclusive, wealthy neighborhood. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's very like not in the cut. Like, I mean, in the cut, I mean, it's like far from any action. It is very residential, uh, very safe, very quiet have plenty of friends who live in that neighborhood and it looks like at the airbnb there was a shooting um four people ended up dead three people injured so seven people were shot at this either party or whatever it was that was happening there and the beverly hills police responded and it, it's become national news i mean like i got text messages from people that don't live in LA and we're like, they live in another country and we're like, hey, I heard there was a mass shooting in LA. Are you okay? Yeah. And and three people died. Three or f I think four now almost. Yeah. And it's pretty, I mean, given where we know the neighborhood is, it's wild, wild to hear that that even is possible. Because yeah. it wasn't a targeted hit, was it? Uh, I was unclear. I, yeah, I think people think it is now. Okay. I think it was like a party and they knew who was going to be there. Got it. Things happen and they released a victim's name. None of them are from Los Angeles. They're all from all over the country, like 
Illinois and Arizona and places like that. So it's 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 going to be really tough because there's a lot going on with crime right now. There's a lot going with police, given what happened just in Memphis yep. in the last couple of days. Yeah. Um, and so those are two like opposite ends of the spectrums of things that are happening. And I don't know how people are going to react to it. I don't know how people should react to it. And it's kind of, a, it, I think specifically, and I said this, I think last week in an episode, I said, the biggest challenge America has is guns. Like, yeah. and the use of them. And it's also the numbness of these incidents, like, sadly. Yeah. So, we had Monterey Park a week ago. We had Half Moon Bay a week ago. Now, we have Beverly Hills. And... All nice neighborhoods. Yeah, it's all all nice neighborhoods. I mean, Half Moon Bay is extremely nice. Monterey yeah. Park is very, uh, like, a, affluent suburb uh, in California. And Beverly Hills, obviously... But the thing is, is anyone changing their behavior if you pull all our friends? This is in our backyard, right? So, like, yeah. we we all know plenty of people that live in these areas, at least the one from the weekend. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's changing anything they're doing. So, well, uh, the sad I, thing I is disagree. the numbness. I, I would disagree. Like, I think, I do think if you talk to local people... They are pretty cautious. Like, I don't think drama's doing what he used to do in Hollywood 10 years ago. You're not yeah. doing the same thing you did 10 years ago. You're going That's to like true. three, four places. You know the controlled environment. I'm not taking my kids any fucking where where I don't have a really good feeling of what's going on. We are changing our behavior. We aren't experiencing so, the city so the same way. So maybe we're just like naturally doing it with subconsciously. Because I'm the not real like sad actively, thing is that I'm not actively thinking drama's about not things. pulling up to the Hollywood Boulevard Cabo Cantina. He's just not. Hell no. But I think <laughs> I think actually the sad thing on it, just to kind of say what you were saying in a different way, is that I think that we are actually all slowly just changing our behavior, and no one's like the problems aren't stopping. Right. It's like things that just used to be normal, and like D just said, like um, I would say Saddle Ranch on Sunset is like where. Uh, we used to go. I, yeah, I wouldn't I would fucking never go deal with that kids. stuff at the at the moment. I definitely wouldn't like, you know, drive my own car or wear any jewelry or anything like that. And I think that like the sad thing is that we are all just slowly not doing those things. And those things that used to just be so normal and fun, now you wouldn't even consider it. And um, but nothing's changing. Like no, you know, like no laws are changing or no. I don't know. You don't see any increased police presence or there's no reaction to it from like a legal perspective we're just all getting used to it this is the new la yeah no it's it's actually someone was asking me about downtown over the last week and i was like i wouldn't go downtown for anything other than the lakers game and when i yeah. go to the lakers game i'm gonna make sure i'm walking through the uh yeah, the you plaza, get dropped get off the Uber at the JW and out. Yeah, you're at yeah. the LA Live where the security yeah, Live, is crazy exactly. and it's fine. There's tons of security. And yeah. so that's the subconscious thing that like maybe 10 years ago, I'd been like, hey, let's walk around and grab a bite to eat. And that's not even yeah. like, like a thing I would think about. So I think as we talk this out loud, you, you guys are both right. We are subconsciously just changing our behavior. Yeah, which sucks. Like, it's just like, I just remember right before COVID, we were like, LA is the best city ever. Fuck Miami, New York. Everyone's moving here. LA, LA, LA. And like, I don't, I, you know, they all, they each have their own problems too, uh, other cities. But like, man, LA is just, this is rough. And like I said, it's not specifically an LA thing. It's happening in a lot of cities, but it just sucks. And it sucks that like things that used to, you would never even talk about, like, you would never talk about like, would you wear a decently nice watch to dinner in West Hollywood at yeah, 9 p.m.? Twice. You would never even consider it. And now it's like, yeah, I don't know. Or maybe I put it in my pocket. I put it on when I get in the door. I don't. It's just like weird shit that is just kind of the new norm. I have so many friends that I've been around that have pulled their watches out of their pockets once they got into restaurants, yeah. which is absurd for a lot of reasons. But like... You know what I'm saying? That's just normal behavior now. It's yeah. fucking weird. It's, it's yeah. interesting that they pull it out at the restaurant. Like, you need to know the time. You don't have an iPhone? 
What's well, just the vibe, you know? You want your fucking <laughs> it's, a vibe. It's, it's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's a flex. Not fucking, that's not for utility. Rich that flex. Thing, Rich has, flex. Has, the batteries have been dead for three months. They're just, you know, want to have if the- you, If you feel, and I, I agree, you should not wear a nice watch in LA, but just leave it at home. I know. But Don't once you get inside dinner. of Delilah, you got to be shining. Whoosh. Put it on. Yeah. <laughs> Pop it on real quick. Right in that dark spot where you get in the door before you go through the first curtain. Yeah, Bam. Pop like, that oh, thing Oh, shit. On. You know, I got so much confidence. It pulled up in my Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, crazy times. I, you know, but we'll see what happens. But human psychology is crazy because I don't think any of us are having less fun because of all our new behaviors. No, we're just, you know, you just I, get comfortable with it. No, That's the no, problem. No, no. Uh, here's a reality is that similar to and, and we didn't get to this topic but there was a topic we were supposed to cover around disneyland and how that oh, how like, did i just skip right on that there, there's a huge divide between people there's two experience at disneyland there's a D- disneyland yeah. where you buy a ticket and you wait in lines and you and have, then the drama version and then the rich people's version and i've done it a few times it's really great <laughs> yeah Whereas disney like, without i've also done the regular disney it's un undoable and i think that's life for most people there's yeah. the regular disneyland or there's the vip disneyland and that and and that's just a microcosm of what's happening in life that like people in la new york are going on continuing to have fun they're just not intermingling with other groups of people anymore. I think it was more diverse. We used to be way more diverse as a society, but now it's like, oh, you're rich, you hang out here. You're poor. So it's very third world in the sense that like, uh, in like Bombay, for example, where there's the haves and the have nots and the wealthy class don't interact with anyone other than the wealthy class. When there's poverty, there's people with famine, and they live a very kind of walled off life. And in their experience, they don't know that they know, but they don't experience what poor people are doing. Yeah. And that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah. Where people are just walled off. Like this is my life and I go to my four places and, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, like one of the places we go to all the time, we don't even talk about the podcast. No one even knows it exists. And that's just what it is now. That's as walled off as it gets. And then that's the problem is that like that society, like where I hang out when I go to New York or where I hang out when I go to Miami, it's not public and it's just quiet and people hang out there. And it's like this walled garden of people having the best time ever. And it's everybody else. Yeah. No, it, it's true. And I feel- The restaurants. I mean, what we talked, I, I, we I, I talked about you, this on a few pods ago, like the top 1%. Accumulated two thirds of all wealth creation. So what does that mean? Walled off even further. I know, but I, I, I'll tell you that I think that two thirds was always, or whatever the number was, was always really wealthy. But they never cared to like segregate that much. Mm-hmm. And now it's just like fuck it. I'm not taking any risk. I, I'll give you a perfect example. I flew back from Nashville on Saturday. I went with the Hwood crew. Came back. I never flown back on a private reserve like which is yeah yeah which is a service mm-hmm. at LAX uh you know I'm fortunate flown private a bunch and that's an incredible experience this was fucking great you get off the plane and immediately get ushered off to the side you walk off the steps where everyone's walking in the terminal yeah. you get into an SUV with your bags they take you to a private lounge and parking lot your car is waiting for you and you go home. It's the easiest thing. And you, you same way, that's the same way you walk in as well. And I think that to me is the prime example of like, that's just what life is now. Like if you have means, you're just not interacting with people or people you don't know. I think that's part of what's crazy and like has us and so many other people so shocked about like the violence and stuff in LA is, I think part of that is that it feels like that, some of those areas that were considered like walled off and safe yeah. um, aren't, you're getting very brutally disrupted uh, that, that perception of, of, yeah. of reality, you know? Yeah. And it's a shakeup because it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I always thought, you know, we were inside the walls here. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, it's it's definitely true. And unfortunately, it seems like it's trending the way that people are going to be increasingly walled off and not integrating with society, which is a net negative as you go. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible if like. But man, that VIP is. Life. Yeah. That reserve VIP at LAX is hard to. It's Fuck. very nice. I, I can't. Like, I mean, I, it's it's too I've never done it. I've never done it. It's, it's it just so looks good. So nice. yeah. it, I mean, it's perfect for you, Java, because you're like you know, yeah, you anti-social <laughs> social club. It's yeah. fucking perfect for you. Yeah. yeah, I know. It looks. So I was it's like, like the next best than flying private. Flying yeah. private obviously is a very different. Flying experience. private is heaven, and then this is you know godly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you have kids, geez. Oh yeah, it's insane. But you're right. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I don't think we have to really be too genius to forecast the future here. It's trending in the direction, like you said, on and of this being more and more the case. Yeah, so. and, and it's going to be up to people, which most people won't do, is actually have conversations with people that aren't in their social circles. Which yeah. never happens. Yeah. I do it all the time at all my restaurants that I go to. I oh. talk to everyone. Oh, you talk to the help? What the hell? <laughs> Jeez. Anand's a man I, of the people. I, I'm a man of the people. You go to any place that I go to, I know everyone from the busboy to the, the waiter to the owner. Now yeah. you have to hang out with them outside of that setting. What do you mean? Like go to a baseball game with them. Love to. Okay, so invite them. I will. That's when you know you're fully integrated. You can't just hang out with them at the restaurant. Well, they know my kids. You. They know my name. Yeah, because if they're serving you, great. that's different. <laughs> I will say, I'll give Anand credit. He's probably the most uh, chatty with um, all different types of yeah, people. Yeah, and I actually do it out of a point of interest. Not like I'm trying to be this like I feel like you do that guy. in the office a lot too. You go around and just chat with people. Yeah. He's a big chatter. He's a big chatter. Big chatter cat. <laughs> That's why I have group chat. Conversationalist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Conversationalist. Yeah. <laughs> I'm genuinely interested in people. Yeah. I get it. I'm not. <laughs> 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 On that note. <laughs> On that, On that note, note. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> that was uh, good. Okay. Great episode. We got a shout out? Yeah. We have a shout out from Matt Wolfen, friend of the pod, to Jacob. It's odd. And his ex-girlfriend, Allie. Hmm. Wow. That's interesting. Jacob and his ex-girlfriend, Allie, are on their engagement. Hmm. Oh. Very interesting. I, I, Jacob oh, is not following. Hold on. Oh. What's going on? Jacob and Matt's ja ex-girlfriend? Or Jacob and his ex-girlfriend? Is it Jacob's ex-girlfriend or Jake uh, Matt's ex-girlfriend is now to, engaged to Jacob? Shout out to I'm Jacob. I'm so confused. And so his, confused. No, no, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Jacob and his ex-girlfriend Allie on their engagement. So, so he must have just engaged. asked his ex-girlfriend to marry him. Congrats. Why wouldn't he just say his current girlfriend? Yeah, didn't they go from ex-girlfriend to current girlfriend to engage, or did they just yeah, skip exactly. right past? Instead of saying, "Do you want to get back together?" He just said, "Do you want to marry me?" <laughs> But either way, they're huge fans. Uh, congrats, Jacob, I think. I mean, hopefully this is a positive. <laughs> or maybe it's a thruple. Or maybe it's a thruple. Or maybe... What's a thruple? You don't know what a thruple is? I don't. That's when you have three... It's three, three people in a, in a relationship. Okay. So maybe Matt, <laughs> Allie, and uh, Jacob are all thruple into that. <laughs> um, okay. Is that it? That's it. <laughs> hopefully uh, you guys are all doing great, Jacob, Allie, yeah, listen, whoever's... and Matt. <laughs> Whoever's hooking up with who, I hope you guys are happy. Um, okay. Uh, that's it. Thank you guys for listening. Um, we'll see you at the rigged Super Bowl in a couple of weeks. <laughs> D, when, how, how early do you think, into, like, will you make your uh, forecast, your uh, prediction? You know, like, I got to analyze injuries. Yeah, I gotta he's analyze, a big injury guy. Okay. Right, I got to right. analyze the weather. So the week before. How about Monday, uh, Super Bowl week? There's no problem. I'll give you a winner. Okay, great. Okay, there you have it. Thank you guys for listening. Everyone have a great week.